Now in this video I want to talk about the new Sofa for Baton X1S remote control. I just reviewed the X1 remote not too long ago and uh, was quite impressed with it. I thought the, the remote did well. I'm glad that there is actually some kind of universal remote out there that that is easy to use. It, you know, you can use an app to set it up on your phone and that's kind of cool because, you know, Logitech Harmony was a fantastic uh, platform that they discontinued. You can't buy them anymore. You have to go to the pre-owned market and this is this is an option that you have right now. And uh, but for now, you can actually buy this relatively inexpensively if you want to just have a one one remote solution for your home theater or for your living room, wherever, and uh, just uh, have just one remote. Clean up your clutter, your remote clutter, and just have one remote. This this will help you do that. Sofa Patan sent this to me, and uh, they wanted me to check it out. And uh, they said that there were a couple of up. So the X1S has a couple of upgrades, including raise to wake, so you don't have to like click a button. To get it to turn on, it'll just turn on when you lift the remote, which is nice. Raise to wake is a good feature to have. Apparently they fi fixed some issues with some communication between the hub and the remote. So it just doesn't hang. It's just uh, supposed to be a, like a, overall an upgraded experience. So I'm gonna check it out and give you my full opinion. But I'll briefly go over what to do, how to easily set it up. If you're interested in buying a new Sofa Baton remote control, please use the link in the description and use the coupon code upscale 20 on Amazon and upscaled on the Sofa of the Baton website. With that, you'll get an extra 20% off. The 20% off stacks upon any uh, any coupon that's already being used on the site, which gets you a pretty substantial discount on the product, making a already very value-rich product even more, even a higher value. So use the link in the description if you want to save some money on a Sofa of the Baton remote. So let's do a quick little unboxing of the Sofa of Baton X. X1S. I did an unboxing of the of the X1 pretty recently, so I don't expect this to be very different. So let's get this guy open. So I'll show you what comes in the box, and then I'll do a quick little comparison of the X1 versus the X1S, which is the new version. Straight away, you get uh, instruction manual. Um, yeah, and here is the remote, which, as you can see, is, looks very similar to the X1. It's exactly the same button layout, familiar little click wheel, and it's already charged. Below that we have uh, another little basic settings, basic setup guide, I guess. And here you got a couple of this. This is this is not changed from the uh, from the X1. You have a couple of like uh, IR repeaters here that you can plug into the hub in case you want to uh, need to send an IR signal to somewhere where the hub hub can't reach. Here we have the hub. It looks exactly. It looks pretty much the same. Again, most of the changes to this have been are like have been done to the. Like the in, uh, they're like uh, non-visible changes. Like uh, they're just uh, you know internal upgrades. You could say big like improvements. There you go. So the uh, hub has some nice sort of rubber padding to keep it from sliding around. Even you could probably uh, I guess these are little uh, key slots in case you wanted to actually put it on a wall. You could probably do that. AC adapter. Uh, let's see, USB-C to USB-A, I guess, yeah, two USB-C to USB-A cables, and that's it. So let's compare the old to the new. So one of the biggest features for the new one, I actually just, I kept this sticker on so I could tell them apart, but notice how when I lifted it, it the screen turned on. That is a useful feature, so you don't have to actually hit the button to actually get it to, you know, to actually see the screen, which is a plus. And I also noticed that the fonts are a little, you know, this is like a Times New Roman, like really old looking font. And this is a bit more modern looking. I think it's a much more attractive looking uh, font uh, presentation, you could say. So, 
Yeah, a uh, very useful upgrade, just the fact that you just pick up the remote and it starts working, which is, uh, I think is quite nice. Apparently some ac communication uh, fixes that have been implemented in this version, you know, a little, so most of the most of the improvements are like in the guts of the remote itself to, to get it to operate a little smoother. And the same, the interface is exactly the same as far as like you know, how you have to navigate you know, you just use this little click wheel and you have to use the back button up here and there's the off to shut off everything. So it's it's a very, it's this exact same layout except you have raised to wake, which is, I, I think is a nice little upgrade there. And, you know, obviously these uh, upgrades come at the same price, so they didn't raise the cost of the, the, the remote. So they're just giving you a little more for your money, which is, I, I, I think is a welcomed upgrade. First thing you're gonna do is find the Sofa Baton app and you're gonna hit set up new hub. You're gonna connect the hub to the power outlet, which I already did, hit next. Then, you're gonna, then it's gonna ask you to press the little button in the back of the hub. So I'll go ahead and do that. It's gonna ask you if the button, blue button, blue indicator is blinking, so hit next. So I'm gonna hit, yeah, I would like to use Bluetooth, hit allow. And there it is, it found the Sofa Baton X1S. So you're gonna hit there, that button. And then I'm gonna select my Wi-Fi, and you don't need to see that. And hit the provision button. Now it's setting up Wi-Fi. So hit done. And I'm just gonna leave the, it's gonna be the X1S hub, and you can rename it there if you want. So hit save. And it's going to ask you to update the firmware. I'll go ahead and do that. It's very possible that you might have some kind of syncing issue, and I just want to point that out. Um, if you, if you, for some reason you're trying to sync your remote and it says lost hub, all you have to do is you hold hold the hold the button here in the back until it starts blinking blue, and then you're going to hold the off and the back button up here at the same time until it says pair uh, hub pairing. For some reason it didn't do that automatically, it didn't pair, but once I did that it did work and everything seems to be working now. Just a little tip. So now I'm gonna add my receiver, my Sony receiver. So I'm gonna look, I'm gonna scroll down and find Sony and then write STR AZ 5000 ES, that's mine. And I'm gonna hit next. And that looks pretty good. Or you can just change the icon and make it, maybe this one, this might look a little more like a receiver. So I hit complete. I'm gonna call it Sony, just receiver. There, Sony receiver, so hit complete. And now it's gonna add it, it's gonna download everything it needs to get it to work. Okay, so now I added, you can see Sony receiver here and it says there's the no not configured again. So I'm gonna hit that. And here it says before creating an activity, you have to complete the device's power settings. So I'm gonna hit that. And then it's gonna ask you turn off when not in use. Again, I didn't change this, so I'm gonna hit confirm. And then it's gonna save it. I'm gonna go back, still not configured. It's gonna say source configuration. In this case, I do need to switch the inputs. So I'll go to configure. And these are direct. My receiver has, button, has uh, buttons to switch the inputs. So I'm gonna hit next. And this lists all the inputs uh, that my receiver has, and there they are. So I'm gonna hit confirm. And then hit And then I'm gonna just hit complete. So complete. And if you go back, it's doesn't say not configured anymore. All right, to add the Apple TV, I'm gonna use Bluetooth. So I'm gonna hit plus and hit Bluetooth. And then it's just gonna give you a list of things that it can actually add in Bluetooth. I'm gonna hit Apple. I'm gonna just, you can just call it, I'm gonna just call it Apple TV. Apple TV. And you can switch the icon if you want uh, there. Yeah, there's a little Apple there. So I'll hit complete. And now it's downloading everything it needs and we'll come back when it's done. So now it's saying, uh, waiting for uh, Bluetooth device to connect, use the original 
a remote control to pair. So I'm gonna to go to settings here, and then I'm going to remotes and devices. So I'm gonna to go to Bluetooth, and then hit other devices, sofa baton 2D24, right there. And then it says connected, and if you look down there, it is connected on my phone as well. And there you go. It is working as it should. Okay, so I uh, finished there. So now you can see I got my Vizio, my Sony receiver, and my Apple TV. So now I just need to create an activity. So you're gonna hit the plus sign here, and I'm going to use all three of these devices. And this, and I'm going to use the media box uh, input here. I'm not gonna change the input because again, I just keep it on HDMI one on my TV here and the Apple TV no need to switch the input. So, and then all devices are on. And then it's just gonna say, which one do you wanna control the volume with? I'm gonna, obviously you're gonna use a receiver. And these are all the buttons that you can use for the Apple TV. And then you can just select you know, just change it to the Apple's logo, which makes sense, and hit complete. Oh, enter the app. Then you're gonna enter uh, the activity name, watch Apple TV, complete. Okay, there. I completed the activity. I'm gonna test the new activity I just made. Watch Apple TV, so I'm gonna lift up the remote. And as you can see, it turned on. And I'm gonna hit activities there with the center scroll button. And then I'm just gonna click it using my thumb here on the little scroll scrolling wheel. And I'm gonna hit watch Apple TV. And as you can see, the receiver turned on, the TV turned on, and just give it a second and the Apple TV should come up. There it is, I got Apple TV, and can I control it? Let's see. And I just hit the return button here. It's hard to kind of get both going. So yeah, I am controlling the Apple TV, and I just clicked one button, all three of my devices went on and started working, and it is working, which is awesome. Well, you may be asking, okay, I'm done watching Apple TV, I'm sick of it, I don't want to watch TV anymore. How do you turn it off? Just hit the off button and everything turns off. TV, receiver, and the Apple TV will go into sleep mode late on its own. So I wanna give you my final thoughts on my on the Sofa Baton X1S. I think it offers some welcome upgrades, including like Race to Wake, which is good. It just turned on by itself. Everything just feels a little smoother. Some of the communication issues have been ironed out. I did experience one minor issue while setting it up that the remote control wasn't the remote control wasn't pairing with the hub, so I can't I couldn't it couldn't find the hub, but I solved it by holding the off and the back button like simultaneously after I had held the button on the hub through for three seconds and that actually finally got it to pair. And you know, that along with like a firmware upgrade like fixed all the problems that I that I experienced with setting it up. After that, everything was smooth sailing, everything is working fantastically. You might have the inclination to like just, you know, give up on the on the thing. You get it, you have a problem. Don't give up so easily. You know, it could just be a simple thing that's easily solved, like, you know, like what I explained with the remote control in the hub or a firmware upgrade. Doing those two things solved every little thing that I had and made it uh, made it work perfectly. As you can see in the video, I was able to set up my remote to work with my receiver, my uh, television, and, and my Apple TV, and it worked great. When you're setting up the hub, make sure that the hub has good line of sight of your devices. If it doesn't, it's not gonna turn the thing on. And if you, if you don't have good line of sight, be sure to use the the IR uh, extenders that, it include, that are included in the box, I believe you get three. Sofa Baton is the only option right now on the market. At this price level, if you just want a simple device that you can use your phone to set up, like I did in the video, like I showed you, it has an app. If you're patient and you find all your stuff and you set it up and you follow all the on-screen directions, you should be good to go. One last thing I want to mention about the X1S is the fact that the Sofa Baton remotes have the best battery life that I've ever experienced with any universal remote control that I've ever used. 
my Harmony remote maybe last will last three to maybe three to five days ish. Uh, my Control Four, you're lucky if you get three days out of it. It's most likely less than two days. The sofa batons are rated to last 45 days, and I believe my X1 lasted about two months before I needed to charge it again. So whatever they're doing with the uh, with the brains inside the remote, it's just very efficient. So if you compare it to my Harmony remote here, very similar in size. The difference is the Harmony Harmony does have a touchscreen, so maybe that plays into the battery life. This will get you 45 days of battery life. So that's why I feel like it's not even necessary to have a cradle for this device. So you just have a one USB-C to plug it, and you're good because you don't have to charge it every two days or something. Here's my Control Four versus the Sofa Baton. Again. It has a cradle to charge. This one you gotta charge every two to three days. This one maybe you get away with five days. So makes sense to have a cradle. When something when you when you when it takes 45 days to drain the battery for the sofa baton, I think I think it's fine to not have a cradle. Just plug it in once in a while and you're good to go. Well, anyway, I want to thank Sofa Baton for sending me in the X1S to check out. I think they made a good product even better with this revision. And I think I can easily recommend this device given the price. It's just simple to use given that it has a nice, uh, that you just do everything on your phone. Well, I hope you liked that look at the Sofa Baton remote. And remember to use the link in the description if you're interested in buying one. You use the code UPSCALE20 on Amazon and upscaled on the Sofa Baton website for an additional 20% off of your Sofa Baton order. If you have any questions about the Sofa Baton X1S, feel free to leave them in the comments. It really helps if you can like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.